Shartington Siam, Shartington Ischaya. Listening to all the speakers here tonight, I feel I'm the wrong person to be standing up here. I am a Native American artist and storyteller, but the land we are upon is not my land. My people come from 100 miles from here, the Lower Elba, Nuxclayam, the Clallam people. The people of this land right here that we call Seattle, named after the man Seat, um, their voice should be heard here tonight. Because of the important things that are being discussed, their voice should be here. The Duqapsh people, the Duwamish people, and the Muckleshoot people. Nowadays, I say Duwamish and Muckleshoot together. By culture and history, this is Duwamish land. By politics and treaty, this is Muckleshoot land. And when I say that, I know I, I disappoint my Duwamish friends and I upset my Muckleshoot friends, but that's where we are after 200 years of colonization. Their voice should be here tonight because as we look at the things that we're trying to discuss tonight, as we look at the issues that confront us, why aren't we talking to the people who've lived here forever, whose ancestors were created here? They were created here and placed here. They've lived here for countless generations. They could tell you stories about how the world came to be. They could tell you stories about how the world works. They could tell you stories about how people live in this world. If you asked them, they would, of course, tell you the simplest things. Don't dam the rivers. They would tell you other simple things. Don't tear down the old growth forests. They would tell you other simple things. Do not put your waste in Wurj, in the Puget Sound. They would tell you all these things, but would you listen? Because sometimes their voice is so disregarded in the discussions that happen in, in, in e the ecological movement, in the green movement, whatever it's called now, their voice is excluded. Their culture was based upon understanding this earth we live upon in a very intimate, powerful, spiritual way. So I've been asked to uh, say something. My, my name is uh, Roger Fernandez. I'm an artist and storyteller. I'm on a circular journey in my life. I was born in Harborview Hospital 60 years ago. I was raised in some apartments until I was 10 years old, two blocks from here. And so it's always nice to come back to my old neighborhood. All right, it is. Um, but as a, as a Clallam person, when I, my mother moved here as she was a young woman, uh, to find work, to find a life here in the city that she couldn't find on the reservation. In the old days, Clallam people, as they approached this land here, the Duwamish land, the Muckleshoot land, they would sing canoe paddle songs to let people know they were coming. And so I'm going to sing a Clallam paddle song. It's called the Klumachin, the Blackfish, the Whale Song. It's a way of paddling the canoe together in unison. It's a way of making that work easier. It's a way of announcing your arrival. And so this is a Clallam song from my people 100 miles from here. Again, as our canoes approach, we'll be singing these songs. And as our canoes approach their land, they would sing welcome songs to us to welcome us. I'm going to share a story with you. First, I must let you know that my teacher, I had to go back and learn my culture. It was very important to me to learn my culture of my ancestors. My teacher said that our greatest teachers are the plants. The Creator put all the knowledge we need to know to live in the world in the plants. And he would point out the window or door and say, your greatest teachers are waiting for you. Being raised in apartments in the middle of Seattle, I didn't know what he was talking about. I really didn't. Only recently I began to talk to the old people who know the plants. And they tell stories about how plants are food and medicine. That food is medicine, medicine is food. And that when you eat these plants, you're being healed. So I'm going to share a story with you, a plant story. It's about blackberry. In the native language of the Lushutsid speakers, they would, the, the people of this land, they would say, Il de Tuhak, which means a long time ago. Il de Tuhak, blackberry grew in the forest. Blackberry began to get bigger and bigger. He grew bigger and bigger. All the time he was growing, blackberry was getting bigger. When he got big enough, Blackberry would reach down his tendrils with those thorns and he would grab animals. He would grab people as they walked by and he would drag them into his heart and he would consume them. He would kill people and animals and he would eat them for his food. And because he was doing this, Blackberry got bigger and bigger and bigger, all the time grabbing anyone who came near him for his food. 
He grew as big as a tree, they said. Blackberry was very big. The people were frightened. Blackberry might take over the world. And Blackberry might take over the world. And so they asked Wolf to help. And Wolf came, hearing the pleas of the people, and he got a whalebone club. He climbed up a tree next to Blackberry and began to hit Blackberry over and over, hitting him with that club over and over, and Blackberry became smaller and smaller. Wolf said to Blackberry, you must never become large again. You must never become as big as a tree. You must never hurt people again or animals again. You will not eat them anymore. And that is why Blackberry is the size Blackberry is today. At one time, Blackberry became a monster, bigger than a tree, eating people and animals. But now Blackberry is waiting. And that is all, the story called Blackberry. I was taught that these stories then, again, might sound fantastic. They might sound, well, they make no sense to the modern mind because blackberries don't have a consciousness. Blackberries never ate people. Wolf can't climb a tree with a club. All those things we've been told, we dismiss because in our modern mind, they make no sense. They could never happen, therefore these stories are not true. But as you know, of course, these stories speak to a different part of us, a different part that needs to understand the world has meaning. So again, I'm going to tell one other short story because I was taught you can't just tell one story. One story alone will tip over. It needs another story to hold it up. So I'm going to tell you another brief story. This story comes from the other side of the mountains, from the sahoptan speaking people of the Yakima area. And uh, I tell it because it's a short story, and I just like this story. It's about another plant. A long time ago, in a village on the other side of the mountains, there was a time of great hunger. There was a time of famine. The people could not find food. The game disappeared. The, ad, the plants disappeared. The rivers were empty. The people were hungry all the time. In one village, there was an old woman, a grandmother, and she heard her children crying, and her ch grandchildren, they were crying and crying in hunger. And the grandmother felt terrible. Her heart hurt so badly because her children were crying, her grandchildren were crying for food, and she had nothing to give them. She felt so sad, she left the village and went up to a hill nearby and sat down, and she began to cry. She cried, and she cried, and she cried. And as she was crying, she began to sink into the ground. She kept crying and crying, and as she cried, she sank more into the ground. She kept crying and crying until she was under the ground. Her grandchildren were looking for Grandma. Where's Grandma? Where's Grandma? And they, they went up the hill nearby, and as they were walking across the hill, her granddaughter said, Grandma is under the ground. Grandma is under the ground. I can feel her. And so they, they, dug, they dug the ground. They kept digging and digging. And out of the ground, they pulled camas, the camas bulbs. Grandma had become food for her children and for her grandchildren. She became camas, which, as you might know, is one of the staple foods of the tribes over there. Grandmother gave herself to become food so the people might survive. And that is all. Within these stories, we learn things way beyond just how the native people saw the world, but they explain how you live in that world. And as we struggle to understand how we've reached this crisis point in our existence, again, where are the voices of the old people from the culture that might help us understand this is this world, this is how it works, this is how you live in the world. Thank you for letting me share these words with you. Thank you.